Ireland. A patchwork of petty kings jostling for hills and pastures and green, green glens. My adopted isle. Azar, how is it that Barith, as knows as ice, is king of Dublin? Dublin is a Viking city, Eivor. But in fact, merchants and beggars come from all parts to parade in its muddy streets. Ought oh, to think of Barith as king of a city. It perhaps sounds grander than it is. Ireland has many, many kings. They litter the countryside, and Barith's throne is not secure. Flan Shinna calls the tune. Who is he? Soon to be crowned High King of all Ireland. Flan distrusts Vikings, though he needs them. Barith will find a way. As a boy, he wasn't much of a fighter, but somehow always came out all right. I'm sure what you say is true. Certainly, he is loved by his people. Your crew can find lodging here. Come, let us find Barith. Eivor! Blood of my blood! Look at you! You have on Rosta's cheekbones! <laughs> and you! The seven-year-old lives in you still. It has been a long stretch since we pelted old Ganfrid with apple cores. <laughs> he never forgave us that. And Sigurd in the clan? How goes with all? There is much to tell you, Barith. But let me breathe your Irish air. Thank you for keeping my ports from being set ablaze in my absence. My ports? Yes, old man. I can rule my city even without you here. Eivor, you arrive in good time. I'm hosting a feast in honor of my son, Sifrith. He is 17 today. A 17-year-old son. And rather a difficult boy at that. Come, there's much to show on the way to my castle. A kingship, a son, and a castle. Truly, you have a fine life, Bahari. Castle? It is a wooden house. Finely crafted, to be sure, but in Shiraz, it would be home to a middling rug merchant. Lead me to your rock merchant's wooden hovel, Barith. Just look at her docks! Wee babe of a city, but the biggest port in all Ireland. You cannot appreciate Irish air without enduring the stench of our docks. It is upon the strength of this port I plan to secure my kingship. Azar told me that your throne may not be entirely steady. King Flan needs some persuading is all. Dublin's vast trade web will bring wealth to all Ireland. If Flan can be made to see that, my kingship and that of my children's children will be safe. I cannot guarantee your throne, but a vast trading web is within my power. No one else I trust my commerce to, old man. You let him call you that? I call him worse things. I still owe you a horn of ale. This is where I leave you. Don't miss the banquet. I'll be there shortly. Ifa, this is my cousin, Eivor. Show her the bow I had you make for her. This is for me. The craftsmanship is beautiful. Me best work. Give her a try. Hit the targets before the sand runs out. Think you can get them all? I just want to get a feel for how the bow handles. That's sure. Watch my arrows fly. I certainly will. Go!
It is a very nice bow. Thank you, Barret. Steps off the boat after a long sea voyage and shoots like a master. Well done, cousin. Wait, is that a house of God? Aye, Christ's own church. Ireland is mostly Christian now, and so is Dublin. Many Norse chew the wafer. You make a place for them. Them? I myself have a place in Christ's house, as I do in the house of Thor. So long as a god has my back, he has my altar. I've built this city up from rubble. Twenty years ago, us Vikings were beaten. The Irish took revenge and sacked Dublin. Azar told me that it is a Viking city. Norse founded it, and I nursed it back to health. When I became king, I was king of a mud pit. There, up ahead, my home. <laughs> My only regret is that my mother and my wife aren't here to greet you. They've gone on pilgrimage to the mountains just now. The waters there improve mother's health. I am left to discipline my wayward son. And to host a banquet. Which should be already underway. Up, Barret! For dear! Here we are. Please, go enjoy yourself. I must have a word with my son. Come meet him before the night's out. Hussar, I was not sure if I would see you here. Why is that? I thought you'd rather take stock of your wares than placidly observe caterwauling Vikings. And you... You would rather spend time with this gossiping Ganti? I know few people here, and of them, I know you are the one who is always ready with a sweet anecdote. I do have some information you may find interesting. Siegfried's stomach doesn't agree with cheese. Had an accident about it last week. The embarrassing, bed-changing kind. He shat himself. Mortifying for a lad of that age. The kind of thing that would devastate him in front of his comrades. If one needed ammunition. Thank you, Asar. Your company is always enlightening. Enough with your ridiculous. It's past time to put away childish things. Milk. What do you expect, Farty? Can I follow your example? The example of a Sigfrid! I expect my son to act like the future king, not roll in the muck. So Flan will take you on as his farting court jester. Think with your head and not your arse. Flan can assure my throne, which will one day be yours. That makes you the arse. Enough! Eivor, my son, Siegfried. I'm sorry, I... I must clear my head. Could you speak to the boy? A lot of shit coming from that mouth. Word is, you have trouble controlling it out the other end, too. I guess I owe you thanks for not beating me bloody. I am not here to quarrel with you, Sigfrith. Da speaks so highly of you. I wanted to see if you lived up to the stories. Does anyone? A 
A visit to Norway might do a young vikinger like you some good. I'd love to go with Da. Maybe the homeland would kindle his warrior spirit. Give Dublin a fair and fearsome king. You're unhappy with how your father rules. Da has the makings of a fine king. But he chooses to play the unctuous merchant instead. I've lost track of your father. Any idea where he might be? He wanted to clear his head. That means he's visiting grandfather's grave. Da has a chat with him almost every day. Bareth can commune with the dead. <laughs> no, his conversations are all one-sided. The grave sits at the top of the hill. I'll find him. Thank you, Sigfrith. Eivor! Teach me how to hit like that sometime. so uneasy. <sighs> a king must forever be on guard. When I'm upset or uncertain, I come here to seek my father's spirit. I didn't even ask after him. Somehow I knew he'd... Some years ago, he was destined to die in battle, and he did. He sits with Odin now. My family owes yours a solemn debt. That winter, your family came to stay with us. I remember your birth, screaming like a warrior. The plague year. No one would take us in. No one but your mother and father. I owe your family my life. And what a life we had. I have fond memories of you and I slipping out to hunt. In dead of night. Stars in the sky. Moonlight on snow. <laughs> and that's how I got that scar. <laughs> I do feel bad about that. What about the one on your cheek? This. A caution from the gods about my vanity. Come. If we tell all our stories, we'll be here a week. Do you see something? My imagination run amok, but let us away. Funny how just the slightest noise sets a fellow on edge. By Thor's hammer, Barret. I could sleep a week. Not as bright as the old days, eh? When we'd search the night in hopes of catching a will o' the wisp. <laughs> Did we catch one? I have a memory of catching one. Yeah! 
Who were they? My ascension to the throne has not been without contest. The previous king's son, Thorstein, is resentful. You told me nothing of this. You are my guest. I am not going to burden you with petty concerns. Petty concerns? I now know why you've been anxious all evening. I... tis worrying. He's never been so bold before. He sees you as a usurper to his throne. Perhaps, but he doesn't seem to want to take it. He contents himself by stealing and smuggling with his band of ruffians. It's petty Viking raiding, but it puts me in a bad light with Flan. That's certain. Keep a sharp watch. I am always the last to leave a party. What is wrong? We were ambushed by Thorstein's men. Rivals I was not made aware of. Small wonder King Flan does not embrace you, Barret. You cannot keep control of the Vikings in your own city. Thorstein makes me look like more of an arse than I do on my own. I see. It is the High King's disfavor that makes this shameful. My cousin, I will take care of Thorstein. No, I do not want to drag you into this sorry mess. Perhaps he'll accept Silver to lie low. For a week or two. But then he'll be back and back again. I can remove this blood once and for all. Eivor, this is not your fight. For any and all of your God's sakes, Barith, let Eivor help you. As of this moment, Barith, my arm is yours. Whatever is needed to bring Flan's smile upon you, I will do. Eivor... I have never been so happy. Your family saved mine those years ago. A fitting reply would be to secure your throne. I will start with Thorstein. It happens that Siegfried may know something. He once ran with Thorstein's gang. Sadly true. Seek him tomorrow in the marketplace. After a night of carousing, he likes to recuperate there. We will begin to forge a bond with High King Flan on Rise of Sun. With me, that will cost you. Yes. <laughs> Don't let the fate 
Here. You made a mistake when you came for Barith, Makiva. Oh, gods! You plan to kill me? Give my head to whatever Irish master you and Barith serve? I serve no Irish master. Borskat! If you had any Norse loyalty, you'd be like me, running the filthy god eaters from the island. The King of Dublin should look out for Vikings, not try to make nice with those cunts who killed our forebears. Join me. I could use someone with real balls, and the silver is good. Be silent, and I might show you mercy. Common refuse, delivered to your judgment, King Barith. Thorstein, author of the plot to waylay me and my cousin. Well, you know how it is, Barith. A fellow needs some silver. A king could fetch Dublin's treasury in ransom. Although I'm not certain you'd bring in quite so much. Say so, Barith, and I will cut out his insolent tongue. On your feet, Thorstein. You bloody <sighs> my claws. <sighs> It is a weighty decision. I would have my closest friend advise me. Eivor? How shall I deal with this ruffian? All must see that you are a just, resolute king. A stately and dignified execution is called for. Well said, Eivor. 
I want no blood feud lasting generations, Thorstein. You are not worth the bother. Dublin confiscates your land and silver. I banish you forevermore. Be gone by sundown. Bend the knee and show your thanks. Best to you, King. I've better places to be than Dublin. Father! Why choose weakness? Give every enemy a length of rope. Soon they will carry your noose. Peace. Flanchina will soon rule all Ireland. Flanchina has the power to make or undo my kingship and that of my son. He is the center of all. But Flan distrusts me. He does not believe I'm truly Christian. By showing Christian mercy, I begin to change his mind. You are more shrewd than I took you for, cousin. Maybe Thorstein's release is worth a kingdom, but will mercy be enough? That is why I must build trade. Flan will see that the strength of Dublin's ports is the strength of Ireland. Show him the power of that trade, cousin. Obtain some rare item from afar, some spice or gem or weapon. And gift it to him at the coronation. It will represent Dublin's reach and help secure my crown. Flan will hear of your Christian mercy. Meantime, I will speak to Asar about a gift. Meet me before the coronation. We will go together. Eivor, welcome to my shop. I came to ask a favor. It is pleasant to strengthen friendships. What do you seek? Barith wishes to show Flan the value of Dublin's trade. Could we obtain a gift from a distant land? This is the very problem vexing me. You see, I have acquired land in Rathdown, previously owned by Thorstein, in fact. But the land has gone to Thorn and Dog, smugglers as well. Once cleared, its trading route will serve our heart's desire. In this case, my heart desires an exotic gift, which would be... A spice merchant I know covets pelts of fine fur. Rathdown has an abundance. It is a perfect match. Spice is a gift fit for a king. Thank you, Asar. It is north of here. You go clear it of smugglers while I sit on my ass. No need for thanks. Show me what lies ahead.
This area is off limits. <laughs> Smugglers. Azara needs them cleared away. <laughs> 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 Are you Avar? Over here. You're one of Azar's men. I am. Azar tells me you two are interested in furs to trade for a gift. Ill show King Flawn the reach of Barith's trade. We'll get the furs you need. How can I help? With trade post supplies. We'll build up the post for better and faster trade. Where would I get these supplies? Monasteries are a good place. They'll have what you need. I'm curious how you and Azar work together. I gather pelts, treat them, and send the fur to Dublin. Azar trades them across the seas. We want to build up the post, both to send bundles of furs to Azar more often, and to store more to send. Thank you, friend. Goodbye, Eivor. Let's go. Must up. Sail out.
Come, help me with this! The supplies the Overseer spoke of. Me out here. This should be enough supplies to build something. The expedition was fruitful. Should we build something? you find more posts to capture. Goodbye, friend.
Azar, you have your trade post. In fact, I have heard from the trader himself. We have furs enough for Flan's gift. Here, my friend, make the trade. Fine spices that cannot be obtained anywhere else. I will see them delivered for the coronation. Flan will certainly grasp the strength of Dublin's trade. Speaking of, Eivor, there are abandoned trade posts across Ireland. You're suggesting I claim them to increase Dublin's reach? We will gain access to goods we could not otherwise obtain. There is great bounty to be had. I will look for opportunities. Meanwhile, I'll find Barrett. He'll be pleased for your Flan's gift. <laughs> 